This week we have a list of things that we need to stop doing in media. Because if your media doesn't actually reflect the real world, then it's hard for me to hold any stakes from the real world in it. So here's a list of some of the biggest misrepresentations in media that I personally keep seeing fucking everywhere. First subject, nature. In nature you have animals like the piranha. Fun fact, only the red-bellied are actually really an issue. The vast majority species of piranha don't actually bite people if they have an option not to. You are literally a couple hundred times their size. You are not something that they could reliably take in a fight. They would not start one. But of the red-bellied ones, which are typically more aggressive and swim in larger schools, it would take about 300 to 500 of them about 5 minutes to eat a 180 pound human down to the bone. And fun fact, the supervillain never has enough for such results, yet almost always that's what happens. It's ridiculous, you will not convince me that a tank full of like, at, at most a hundred piranha, completely skeletonized a full human being in under a minute. I simply won't believe that. You're using ridiculousness to emphasize their evilness, and frankly, if your character is written well, you don't need to do that. Even Ozai didn't need a piranha tank. Also, most sharks are not vicious, bloodthirsty killers either. They typically won't attack or be drawn to a human. Much like piranha, you're not what they're aiming to eat, and you're kind of a sizable prey for a shark. Hyenas are next. Everyone knows hyenas, right? They are not scavengers. That is a fucking lie. They don't need to scavenge shit. They are really good hunters, and in fact have a better success rate per hunt than lions do. And the laughing they do is not a good thing. It's a sign of aggression. If they're laughing at you, it's not because they think you're interesting or funny, it's because they think you're in their territory and they're going to kill you. And they will win because their jaws are strong enough to crush bone, and they have a really good hunting record and astoundingly capable pack tactics. Also, while I was researching them, it turns out the females have dicks, so that's like a whole thing in the hyena hierarchy. Don't blame me, blame nature. Here's an animal regularly misrepresented in movies, a human. Disgusting and ugly creatures that look like a cross between a chimpanzee and a naked mole rat, but we'll talk about them anyway. First and foremost, CPR on a human has a success rate of around 15%. I'm really getting sick of especially crime shows having someone almost always succeed at CPR. The amount of people saved by CPR in movies and media might actually be exceeding the amount of people saved by CPR in real life at this point. Ever seen someone get hit in the head and then end up knocked out? Fun fact, if you're hit hard enough to be knocked out, then you've been hit hard enough for your brain to bounce off the inside of your skull and potentially deal permanent brain damage and or kill you. So no, that is not something you can regularly do and be okay. Which kinda explains how Stargate SG-1 just kept getting weirder and weirder if you view it from the perspective that all of them are just suffering massive concussions and hallucinating in a hospital bed after their first few bouts of being knocked out. Also, humans do not just use 10% of their brain. I'm not sure why that's still a thing people believe. I thought we left the 2000 era, but people still do. Limitless, and indeed several other shows, constantly use the, you only use 10% of your brain. Not true. You use way more than 10% of your brain. You use all of it. You need all of it. You definitely need more than 10% of your brain. Humans also, on very, very rare occasions, can survive falls from terminal velocity. In order to reach terminal velocity, you need to fall for approximately 12 seconds, according to Google. So in reality, any fall from 12 seconds or higher is effectively the same amount. So someone surviving from falling out of an airplane is possible, because people have survived terminal velocity falls on very, very rare occasions. Bear in mind, this breaks the human. So I really don't get how so many action heroes fall such substantial distances, but they're totally fine because, you know, they're fine. So let's bear in mind just how unlikely it is that you survive a decent fall without some kind of injury. 
you should be getting injured. This isn't necessarily something that's misrepresented in media, but there's plenty of people who fall great distances in media and seem to walk it off totally fine. You do need training to properly roll out of a fall without breaking something. And even if you manage to get out alive, there's still a good chance you break or sprain or pull something. And you're definitely gonna fuck something up if you drive from one skyscraper to another through the air. Yes, I'm mocking that movie for its lack of physics. I'm not a good fisherman, it's just easier if the fish is in a barrel. Also misrepresented, quote unquote, Mother Nature. Fun fact, uh, unless you're making her a canonical part of the influence of your story, she does not have a will and shouldn't in your movie. Life did not find a way in Jurassic Park a bunch of geneticists fucked up their job and allowed something bad to happen. Any kind of nature finding a way takes hundreds of thousands of years and multiple generations. The reason it worked so fast in Jurassic Park was not because nature found a way, because life found a way. It's because the geneticists should be fucking fired. Also misrepresented in media often, combat. Fun fact, you can't dodge bullets, no matter what. There is absolutely no way a human being could ever possibly move out of the way fast enough to dodge a bullet. If someone fired a bullet and you immediately lifted your feet off the ground, you would not fall out of the way fast enough for it not to kill you. Unless you're at an absurd distance. No martial art makes you able to do that. Also, unless you're canonizing magic, you don't get superpowers with your martial arts. That's not how that works. I've seen a lot of grown-ass men defending Fist of the North Star as a great show because, oh look, he doesn't use magic or any of that, just pure martial art. Buddy, he presses pressure points on someone's body to make their head explode. The human body does not have a make head explode button. It just doesn't. Also, he punched a tank until it exploded. That's magic, I'm sorry, there's no way. There is no amount of martial art expertise that allows you to punch a tank, dent the metal, and have your hand come back as anything shy of a maraca. Also, you can definitely stop someone's arm while they're swinging a melee weapon, but just because you have martial arts does not mean you can hold up your arm and block the melee weapon itself or catch a sword midair. This is fiction. Unless you're canonizing magic. I'm totally fine with some martial arts magic. I am. You can have that. Do that in your show. Possibly the only point, and uh, I can't believe... Oh, God. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I will give a point to Naruto for saying that Taijutsu does require chakra, just not to be infused with hand signs. They use chakra to enhance their body. So, technically, Rock Lee is possible in their world because it's not just martial art it's also chakra magic you have no idea how painful it is to be lenient to naruto but yeah if you block a melee weapon with your bare hand like a baseball bat it'll break your arm it'll just fuck up your arm instead of where it was going to hit and now you're down a limb you should dodge it or block the arm swinging the melee weapon because otherwise you're gonna take damage anyway. Dodging probably better. And then there's guns! Now, we'll ignore the whole get shot fly 30 feet away because that went away with the cowboy flicks of the old days. But there's still a lot of things that happen today! First, you can't shoot a gun out of someone's hand. There's no way you are making an accurate shot in a fast decision to hit a gun out of someone's hand from any kind of real range. And even then, you're assuming that that gun would fly out of their hand. It's entirely likely that their hand would be holding it hard enough that if you hit the gun, it wouldn't fly out. Most notably because they're holding a gun and therefore, supposedly, holding it hard enough that the impact and or kick of a bullet would not send it out of their hand, or else they would drop it when they fired. Also, shooting someone in the leg almost never stops them from charging. If they have made the adrenaline fueled decision to charge at you, it's very unlikely that hitting them in the leg will stop them from moving. 
or indeed incapacitate them permanently. It's also incredibly unlikely you even hit that shot because a moving target is really hard to hit especially if you have to aim at them quickly. And finally, something I see so often, the sudden stormtrooper theory, where you suddenly join the stormtrooper ranks for some reason. You would not reasonably miss a shot on a non-moving target after having time to take aim if you've ever held a gun before. You see it all the time, the people walk around a corner where a gunman is waiting for them, he opens fire with his full auto machine gun, and the bullets hit the ground all around them, they have time to turn around and run. That happens way too fucking often. You had time to aim, you were aiming down sights, you knew where they were going to be, there is no reason you should be hitting the ground at all. Especially if you're not at some absurdly high range. I'm getting really sick of bullets ricocheting around the ground of someone who's running. If someone's firing a machine gun at you while you're running, they'll probably hit you somewhere. And if you weren't running when they started firing, they definitely hit you somewhere or someone should take the gun away from that asshole. Our last category? Technology. The future. Category 1, power. Nuclear reactors don't explode. I'm willing to grant some leniency to something like underwater because they said reactor, they never clarified it was nuclear. Though that would be the natural assumption, in which case that's stupid. But reactors don't explode. Fun fact, they seem to have been almost specifically maliciously designed not to for some reason. Now, there are some issues. Generally, when something goes wrong in a reactor, you generally just get it to melt down. But it won't explode like a nuclear bomb. It doesn't work the same way, and there's a fuck ton of safety features to ensure that even meltdown is unlikely. Stop having your nuclear reactors go nuclear. That's not how they work and it's really, really annoying to see it over and over again. Because frankly, it's kind of destructive in the real world for everyone to think that that's something you can do. People are afraid of nuclear power. It's not going to go nuclear. Even Chernobyl turned out to be just an absolute failure of design on every level. Like, that was not what would happen in a standard nuclear reactor, or indeed one we built nowadays. The safety systems in those are off the charts. It's perfectly safe. What we do with the waste afterwards, eh, we can talk about that in a political-based video that I promise I'll totally make right after I hit 10,000 subscribers. Here's a big one, space. And this is one of my favorites because space gets it wrong more than anywhere else. First, it's not cold. It is not cold in space. There is nowhere for the heat to bleed off to or anything for the energy to be spent on. So it wouldn't be cold in a spaceship. In fact, as mentioned in a video by Possum Reviews, venting the heat out of a spacecraft is actually one of the hardest things to do. If there's something wrong with your life support system, you don't freeze, you boil alive. Without the heat going anywhere, it just all stays inside the ship. And it has nowhere to go because there's nothing for the energy to be expanded into. Next, if you depressurize, you can't hold your breath. Like they, some, some people say, oh, hold your breath or don't hold your breath because then your lungs will explode. That's not how either of those things work. You can't hold your breath. The muscles that you hold your breath with are not designed to hold in major pressure inside of your body. Your body has absolutely no reason to develop muscles that hold things into your body, so it didn't. You cannot hold your breath in space. All the air will be pulled right out of you. Or pushed, I suppose. And it will come out of any and every orifice that it is inside of. So yeah, you might want to change after you get back in the spaceship if you survive. Also, you don't explode. The depressurization is probably not good for you, but it's only one atmosphere to zero atmospheres. It's not going to make you explode. It's not going to fuck you up too, too bad. It's not good for you, and it will definitely do damage and potentially kill you, but you won't explode instantly. There is an amount of time you survive during. And finally for space, or at least finally for this video, maybe I'll come up with more later. Asteroids are nowhere near each other. Stop drawing them close by. We must navigate the asteroid field. Bitch, I could throw a stone and likely hit nothing in an asteroid field. There are hundreds to hundreds of thousands of miles between each asteroid. 
it's not dense. It's dense on an astronomical scale, but it's not dense on any kind of realistic scale. I haven't done any math or research on this, but I'll confidently say you could probably navigate the Earth through an asteroid field. Assuming its gravity didn't pull them in, you know. Also, going any speed around a sun or planet does not affect the flow of time at all for the planet you are going around. Like, Superman can't reverse time that way, and uh, Star Trek can't go back in time that way. That's, that's not related to this video, but I just really hate that. And then, in technology, there's pure and utter nonsense. Like, the good with computers guy knowing how to hack a computer. Fun fact, hacking requires usually other systems and programs. You can't just sit down at a computer and start hacking. They've, like, really worked to make that hard to do. Almost like they didn't want you to do that to their system. Also, reversing a polarity does not equal nullify. Fun fact, antimatter has a polar opposite charge from normal matter. Yet when you put antimatter with normal matter, it does in fact nullify both items. I would not consider it to be a null effect, however. It's generally noticeable. So, reverse polarity of power does not necessarily mean it's going to just fizzle. But they use that term a lot. Also, plasma doesn't burn. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. It is heated well beyond any point where something would be burning. You cannot set plasma on fire. You cannot ignite it. That's not what plasma is. Stop using that word in your sci-fi shows. I'm looking at you, Star Trek. And all the other times that they didn't so much as Google something before they actually used it. Pure techno babble, or just absolute idiocy that they didn't bother to look up. It's like someone in today's day and age saying bats are blind. We've known for quite some time that that's not true. And you might be wondering why all of these even matter. Well, simple. Because it shows they didn't put any effort into it. They didn't actually care if it made sense. How am I supposed to get invested in your show? How am I supposed to get invested in your movie? if you weren't even invested enough to make sure it had anything right. And if several parts of physics don't even apply, then I'm not sure how I'm going to feel the weight of it. If you've hinged your major issue or solution on something I know wouldn't work, I can't relate to it. I can't get involved in it. At the end of the day, if you need to use high tech, most of these you should just avoid because they're just not necessary. But the rest of them, especially in technology, don't be afraid to simply not explain it if explaining it isn't required. Like the Star Killer base or whatever it was from the new trilogy. I will let it eat stars to power itself. You didn't explain how that works, so it's fine. I don't need to know how it works. You don't need to explain it. That's not the important part of the story. My issue is when it blows up and there's a star left behind. Now, I'll give you that you could dismantle a star and use it for energy, but I will not let you just say, well, if it blows up, it makes the star again. No. Now you're crossing a line, and you didn't even need to do that. One of the worst things you can ever do for anything is over-explaining something in your technology that didn't need to be explained. Because then you're opening yourself up to being, well, compared to reality. There's a reason Star Trek has the highest death rate of any show ever. Because you've revealed so much about your teleporters that there's no feasible way it could be anything except death to step into one. They are killing current you, saving the pattern, and assembling a new you that thinks it's you on the other side. That's the only way it could possibly work. See CGP Grey's video on the subject. All because they revealed too much about the technology. Now, granted, Star Trek has, well, a laughable relation to reality, but it exists in other stories, too. How does a lightsaber work? In the movies, we're not talking comics or any of that junk. We're not talking, like, expanded universe fucking how it works books. In the movies, and in the existing canon, how does it work? Well, they never really get into super details. We don't really know how the crystals work. It just works with the Force. This is a good way to do it. Don't explain it if you don't have to. This is a weapon used by Jedi. Some people call it a laser sword, but that's mostly people who aren't Jedi. So we don't know if it's a laser or not. The Jedi never call it that as far as I'm aware. So it could be anything. 
It could be plasma. Who knows? We don't know how the crystal exactly works to focus. Who knows? Don't explain it if you don't have to. And try to keep things within the realm of reality. Otherwise your show isn't relatable. If it doesn't exist in reality, then it's not relatable. And if it doesn't add something, there's no reason to put it in the show. Why add all the piranha attacks? Why add all of the nuclear reactor explosions? Well, those are mostly because you're stuck for an ending and you needed to blow something up. But that's lazy too. Have things heat up instead of cool down when your ship's life support stops working. Have someone fail CPR. Have someone get knocked out with a vascular constriction hold instead of being hit in the head. Instead of relying on martial arts magic to make something work, maybe, you know, just use better choreography. It's just a pet peeve of mine that they keep using these things wrong. Why? You don't have to. They're not even necessary for the story half the time. But they draw attention to them for no reason. But tell me in the comments, what's something that a show drew your attention towards that really bothered you as something just completely unnecessary to do that with? What plot point did you know wouldn't work, but they used it anyway? But if you don't agree and think that these are perfectly fine things to put into any show, no matter what, feel free to let me know in the comments. And remember, be entertainingly angry.